Meet IG-11, my first animatronic droid project. It was a long, hard adventure to get this droid working, but now that he is, I wanted to share with you how I did it. He is a fully 3D printed animatronic head using files available from Droid Division on Etsy. They are very accurate files. I usually scrutinize the heck out of files I've purchased and make changes before I can print them because I'm super particular about things like accuracy. But these were so good that I didn't actually end up making any aesthetic changes, only some minor ones to get the animatronics working the way I wanted. I should note here that the download comes with two sets of files, one just for doing the static build and one for the animatronic build. Make sure you're using the correct version if you want to make him move. I have him set up with an Arduino Uno board controlling a Mini Maestro and a SparkFun MP3 trigger through a DevMo audio amp. I have a Daioki IR receiver with a remote that allows me to trigger emotes that were created with the Maestro Control Center app. He is driven by two 270 degree rotation servos for the eye and sensor sections. One continuous rotation servo for the neck and one 9 gram standard servo for the eye tilt. Then I have 11 NeoPixel LED chips wired together for the sensor lights. Before I move on, I should mention that I am going to add a list to the description of this video with links to all of the parts I purchased and files I used to make his head so you can reference those when you need them. IG-11 uses this remote to control him. Right now he's in his standby state. If I press the up button, that will activate him and put him into his idle state which is basically a state that he will just kind of idle and look around the room. Then I can press one through four to trigger emotes on him. So if I press one, I am IG unit. I am an asteroid. I was the correct. And then two. I am no longer a hunter. I am this child's asteroid. If you come near this child, I will have no choice but to kill you. That was a joke. It is meant to put you at ease. And then three. Manufacturer's protocol dictates I cannot be captured. I must self-destruct. And then lastly, four. I will disengage self-destruct initiative. And then I can press down to put him back into his standby state. For the most part, as far as building, I followed the instructions that came with the files from Droid Division, specifically the IG-11 head mechanism PDF file for the animatronic head. I only made a few minor changes. For example, I cut one extra hole in the axial tube because I needed more spots to put wires. The main change I made was adding an extra slip ring for the eyes tilt servo. Now ultimately I didn't need to do this because I ended up switching it to non-continuous rotation servos. And because of this, I honestly could have bypassed the slip ring that is designed into it, but I didn't know this when I started. So if you want, you can save yourself some headaches and printing time and just don't bother with the slip rings because in my version of the IG-11, the only part that's been continuously is the neck and it has no wires in it. So other than that, you can follow the instructions to a T. There are a few notes though. The small tab on the eye linkage assembly was a major pain. It broke on me twice and I had to keep reprinting this part to get the version that worked. It just gets a lot of pressure on it from the servos so it can break easily. So if you can print this piece with settings that make it stronger, you can save yourself some headaches. Another thing to be aware of, don't skimp on the ball bearings. I got cheap ones and while they work, I had a lot of issues trying to figure out how to get them to be smooth and have good movement. I ended up having to take them apart so that I could apply some lithium grease to them to keep them moving. 3-in-1 oil just wasn't cutting it. Otherwise, they kept seizing up on me and caused the servos to not work as well. The last note on assembly I will say is to make sure you spend ample time sanding and cleaning out the grooves where your bearings are going to make contact with the parts. I didn't at first and it was making the parts bumpy and not smooth. It also added extra tension and made the servos have to work harder to move the parts. When you print your drive plate, make sure you print it with plenty of infill or even solid. 
and use a fairly large wall thickness. My first one broke on me because the servos and bearings put considerable pressure on the little pegs that the bearings mount on. I had to print another at 100% infill to make sure it was strong enough to not snap. I also did a coat of acetone over it to help melt and seal the layers together on the outside once it was done. The LED sensor frame had one small issue. When I printed mine, for some reason it didn't seem to fit very well. The ends of it where it meets inside were super tight and I had to spend a lot of time sanding and filing it down to get it to fit. If you want to just save yourself some headaches, you could modify this part to have a little extra space in there. Just be careful you don't do too much as you, don't want, you do want it to be kind of tight. Just a quick note on finishing IG-11. The process I took to get the part smooth was a back and forth with sanding and filler primer. Basically, I'd sanded the parts down really good with 80 grit to get the major flaws and print lines gone. Then I did a thick coat of filler primer. Then more sanding at 220 to 400 grit. Then a coat of regular primer. More light sanding with 400 grit where needed. Then painted it with the base coat. I did all the weathering uh, at the very end once the head was 100% complete and working from an electronic standpoint. I used Rust-Oleum gilded brass for the brass looking sections and Montana metallic graphite for the silver parts. Weathering on this guy was pretty simple. I just did some basic dry brushing over the edges and bumps with some silver leaf rub and buff to give it some wear. Then I used a black wash to add some dirt and grime in various places. Then I went over it with some oils and terps to add some dirt and rust looks. One last note for the head. If you are not building the body, you will either need to print the stand that comes with the files, or make your own. Because once you get this thing assembled, it will not stand up on its own. Unless you are not going to keep the axial tube long enough to put it on the body, you'll need to do something. I made a temporary stand for mine out of wood until I got a new stand design. I didn't use the stand that was supplied with it because it didn't have space in the back for the electronics. That's all for this video. Stay tuned and watch part 2 where I discuss how I set up the electronics for the head.